afternoon and welcome to TNN Motorsports live coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 from Hickory, North Carolina. The last time we were here, it rained us out back in February. Not so today. We got beautiful sunshine skies. We're about ready to go racing. Steve Grissom sat on the pole here back in February. He's still there. He's tired of waiting, ready to go now. The only other change is Ken Schrader was scheduled to drive here. Due to an earlier scheduling conflict, he's not here today. Dale Earnhardt is going to take over his car. We're just about ready to go racing. everyone and welcome to Hickory on a beautiful 80 degree Easter Saturday. Mike Joy with Neil Bonnet. Neil in this 300 lap race. These teams seem real concerned about tire wear. Mike they can't change tires here unless they do it on the green they won't be penalized but if you change on the caution flag it's going to cost you two laps. It's almost the same thing. On the green you lose time on the caution so tire wear is going to be a big factor today. They've lengthened this event to 300 laps in hopes that every team will have to stop for fuel. What do you think? Can you gamble? It's going to be a gamble. If these guys can go that far without fuel, they're going to be looking at the fuel cells in these race cars. 300 laps is pushing it a little more than normal. This race postponed from February. The field was set back then, but some of these drivers have whole new race cars. They practice today, and we're about to see how they fare. Here's the starting lineup for the Mountain Dew 500. As they qualified in February, Steve Grissom is on the pole in his Chentlock Oldsmobile. Dale Earnhardt driving Ken Schrader's car on the outside pole at the Chevrolet. In row number two, series champ Bobby Labonte in a Chevrolet. Right alongside former champion Chuck Bound, he's in a Pontiac. The fifth starting spot for this race, earned by Ward Burton, driving a Buick. And right with him, one of the series' newest winners, Robert Presley in an Oldsmobile. Daryl Waltrip will line up in the seventh spot in his Chevrolet. And next door, Mike Wallace from Missouri in the Dick Morosa Oldsmobile. Butch Miller will go off in ninth position in the Henderson Oldsmobile, and Jack Sprague will be right there in 10th spot in an old. Further back, Joni Macek and Jimmy Spencer in row six, Tom Peck and Bobby Dotter in seven. Row eight, it's Ed Faree with the Bush North champ, Ricky Craven. Local driver, Scott Kilby and Jeff Green. Then a lot of fast cars starting out back. Look at Jimmy Hensley there, Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin, and further on back, drivers like Kenny Wallace and Jeff Burton toward the back. Then you've got Tracy Leslie with a broken leg, Steve Boley in the Jack Ingram car, Todd Bodine, and finally, Tommy Houston in the 30th and final provisional spot. Today, we'll be riding along with Kenny Wallace in the Dirt Devil Pontiac. There's a look at the onboard picture as Kenny tries to clear those tires, get a little heat in them, looking ahead at Jeff Gordon's Ford and Ernie Irvin Chevrolet. Neil, we're getting set for 300 laps. Mike, I tell you, this is a unique situation. Qualifying usually puts your fast cars up front, spread the field out, determine who's real good. This is a whole new deal. It's a different weather and all. Are the fast guys in the front and are some of the real good cars in the back? We see Jeff Gordon. He ran real fast here, but he's in the rear. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. They've got on Gordon's car uh, taped to the dash or a little piece of uh, padding near the dash. Think of Harry Gant. Yeah, they say, <laughs> they said Harry always starts in the rear and goes to the front in these bush races, so they're going to try that psychology with Jeff. Now look to the left of your screen. That's the number 15 car that Ken Schrader here qualified in February. Kenny can't be here. He com was previously committed to the ASA race that you'll see on TNN tomorrow. So Dale Earnhardt is in that car. We're getting ready to go green for the first of 300 laps. Steve Grissom leads them down to the green with Earnhardt alongside. And they swap a little bit of paint down in one and wind up out of two. Now into turn three and four, which is just freshly repaved. It was giving the drivers a little trouble in practice. Grissom has the lead. Boy, you talk about just paved. They paved it yesterday, Mike, and it could be a problem. But we'll take big wreck right here coming on the fourth turn. Richard Lassiter and Ricky Craven. Craven in the DuPont finishes car. And the innkeeper Pontiac of Richard Lassiter of Little Rock, Arkansas. And at lap two, we are quickly under caution. We'll be right back from the Hickory Motor Speedway Mountain Dew 500 coverage exclusively on TNN. Today's exclusive coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 on TNN is brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. And by Miller Genuine Draft. 
cold filtered for real draft taste, so get out of the old, get into the cold. Two weeks ago, the Bush Grand National Series ran the Budweiser 250 at Bristol, Tennessee. Butch Miller started on the pole in Charlie Henderson's Food Country car. Jeff Gordon alongside. Bobby Labonte spun early, came in for tires, never got quite caught back up with the pack. Gordon led the first nine laps until Miller went to the front. But then Butch Miller developed brake line problems and turned the lead back to Gordon. Jimmy Hensley's 25 made a strong showing, coming from sixth to second spot. But on lap 116, NASCAR officials brought out the red flag for rain, with Jimmy Spencer leading. After a four-hour delay, Spencer couldn't get his car out of reverse and had to retire from the event. Harry Gantz, number seven, had started back in 18th spot and, as usual, climbed its way up through traffic. Todd Bodine had brought the Frank Cece car all the way to third place with the black flag when part of his exhaust came loose. Gantz took the checkered flag, finishing three seconds ahead of Davey Allison, and hear how the points stack up coming to Hickory. Kenny Wallace, the leader. Jeff Gordon in second. Then Presley, Nemechek, and Grissom. We're back to green. That's Bobby Labonte up front. Dale Earnhardt right with him. Steve Grissom, Robert Presley, and Darrell Waltrip, the front five. Mike, I'm not so sure Steve Grissom is not the car to really watch because just a few laps ago, he got bumped all the way back to fifth place. He's worked himself around those cars back into third, so his car is capable to get back in the front. One car spinning into the wall. You saw it in our front straightaway speed shot. And that's Jack Sprague in the Staff America car. See if he can get rolling again. We're going to stay green. Sprague gets running, and you saw him just get loose there from the speed shot. And he went around down in one. One car against the fence in four. Bobby Dotter struggling to hang on to it. Steve Foley way up there in the marbles in turn four. Mike, I think what we're seeing is before this race started, they swept all that track off where it was paved yesterday and it's like running marbles if you get the least bit out of the groove they're just sliding all over the racetrack steve grissom to second spot robert presley in 59 the alliance training center car comes right with him and earnhardt drops to four bobby labonte up front and chasing traffic once again you don't get much of a break out here and earnhardt's in trouble dale earnhardt is slowing and heading for pit road Watch Bobby Labonte come past. As quick as he turned in, I thought it would be a the tire. It looks like the right front might be low on the car. Glenn Jarrett is there. Yeah, they've got a problem. The right front tire is low. They're having to change both right side tires. You're seeing cars all over the racetrack coming off of turn four. The racetrack is tearing up. There's grit and gravel everywhere. That's probably what shut the tire on Earnhardt's car. We're going to see a lot of this today, guys. Turn four is a mess. He lost a lap in the process. Lost one lap, and he's running toward the tail of being two laps down. Meanwhile, Jeff Green's car is being pushed out of the race. 29 of 300 laps complete. Bobby Labonte, just there ahead of Jimmy Spencer's car. Back, at, back then to Rob's packed house here at Hickory Motor Speedway. Here's the way they're running. Stopped at 35 laps complete on the scoreboard. Steve Grissom, Robert Presley, Walter Burton, and Spencer. That's the front five. Butch Miller running sixth. He started ninth. Chuck Bound looks real different without his mustache. Uh, I think it's been 15 years since he didn't have one. Jeff Gordon, now that at 20 years old, Jeff went up to Chuck and says, now, you mean I got to shave mine? I've had mine for 20 years, too. Of course, he's only 20. Tom Peck is ninth, and Mike Wallace running in the 10th spot. Ed Faree, uh, Jimmy Hensley. Big news from the Hensley camp. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit here. Bobby Dodder, Ernie Irvin, and Joe Nemechek. That's the top 15. And then Jim Bound, who now says his older brother looks younger than he does, tans a mustache. Scott Kilby, the local driver, Jeff Burton, Kenny Wallace, and Tracy Leslie. That's the top 20 here. And uh, cars on the lead lap go all the way back through Tommy Houston. And then Bobby Labonte, you still see the right front of that car torn up a bit. Mike, if people are watching the rundown and wonder what happened to Nemechek, at the same time Tommy Houston was having trouble in turn four, right at the start finish line, Nemechek got in the wall. He lost it in turn four and hit the wall, so he fell way back also. Bobby Labonte, defending Bush Grand National Champion. There seems to be a jinx on fellows who are trying to repeat as Bush Series champions. What about it, Bobby? He can run pretty good in a lot of races. We just had a lot of bad luck go along with it, you know. And I mean, that's just part of racing. Anything can happen uh, in this sport. I mean, you just got to grin and bear it a lot of times. And, you know, right now we've got a Slim Jim Chevrolet running good. We just need to have a little luck to go along with it. 
Bobby Labonte having a rather tough day of it here at the Hickory Motor Speedway. Oh. Bush Grand National officials are still standing out in turn number four as uh, the tractor and sweeper is going to take a run at moving. You can see now they've got all this aggregate way up in the top part of the racetrack, and it looks, uh, Neil, as if the plan, now the big blower truck coming out as well, is going to be to give the drivers uh, two clean grooves to race on uh, as long as the pavement will hold up. And we can go back to green flag racing, keep that stuff way up toward the top of the racetrack where you shouldn't be anyhow. Mike, I don't know what kind of work they did on the racetrack. There's a chance that if it keeps coming up, they could cut back down to the old surface. I'm sure they put a little layer on top of the old racetrack. They might can eventually knock this top section off and get the cars running again. But boy, right now, that thing is going to be treacherous until they get that gravel off of it. And you look at some of the cars back through the field. As we wait out this uh, hopefully brief red flag delay while they clean up turn number four, 35 of 300 laps complete here at Hickory on TNN. We'll be right back. Today's coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 is being brought to you by Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. We're getting set for the restart in what has become the Bump and Stumble 500. We're getting this one in about 10 to 15 laps at a time. Oldsmobile safety car is in. Here comes Steve Grissom to lead them around, and Tommy Houston to try to get his lap back. Not going to do it as Grissom hauls them off into turn number one, and everybody just kind of tiptoes down through there just a bit. That's Dale Earnhardt caught up on the high side, and he's going to backpedal a bit. Field gets into three. Presley coming hard underneath Houston. And we're clean to complete lap 46. That's an accomplishment in itself, Mike. Here we go. Learn, uh, there's uh, Walters coming by. Grissom out front, and he's got a good lead. And Darrell Walters just moved into second place. And there's Darrell. He just passed the 59 car. He's hammered him, trying to get back around him now. Presley, who won at Darlington. Coming hard in the 59, but look at the lead that Grissom is building up. A little further back, in trouble again. Ed Faree is up there at turn four. Caution. Can I guess which corner? <laughs> Calamity corner. Turn three. Here we go again. You see Dale Earnhardt. He's in the 15 car today that Ken Schrader qualified for this race. And he's drifted a bit back in the pack. So at lap 49, we have the fifth caution of the day. And it's Ed Faree standing up between three and four. There's Earnhardt. Western Steer Mom and Pops car of Kenny Schrader. We saw Earnhardt try it. We saw Tommy Houston try it. The lap cars have to go to the outside on this racetrack, and boy, it's going to be tough for anybody to get a lap back in that outside lane. But when Tommy Houston, he's the track champion, won several races, racetrack, he couldn't work outside. Earnhardt couldn't get it done out there, so it's going to be tough to get those laps back. Going to go green in one lap here. Jeff Burton's going to get out there in that outside. He's the latest guy. He gets the opportunity or whatever it is to try to get a lap back in that outside lane, and it's not been a whole lot of fun trying to do that. We get a word from Glenn Jarrett on the crew's reaction to what's going on down here. Well, the crews are not real happy about all this, as are the drivers. I'm standing beside of Ricky Craven. Ricky, what's wrong with your car? Well, it's not a good day for the DuPont Chevrolet. We have an engine problem. We're just not sure where it is. They're doing Engine trouble on Ricky Craven's car. Steve Grissom with now Darrell Waltrip in hot pursuit. No lap cars to separate them. And down in three, four. Things get close again as Tommy Houston way up high. Boy, anybody gets in three, four hard gets up high. The one groove that works is way down on the bottom. Right where Steve Grissom and Darrell Waltrip are. Mike, I think somebody starts really working as Darrell Waltrip now. He's sitting there right around the inside of the racetrack. He's just sitting there by this time. He's one of the best at this. And you see him now come up and put a little bit of heat on Grissom. Watch his car right in the very bottom. Grissom might be three or four foot out, but Darrell's right on the line. He's going to be in good shape. Back behind that foot. Look at the jostling going on here. Robert Presley just trying to root the rear bumper out from under Jeff Burton's car. Now, Burton in the eight car is a lap down. They made a pit stop under caution. They did not beat the pace car to the end of pit road, so he's a lap down. Mike, 
here's when tempers really flare. You know, here we are inside of Kenny Wallace's car. He's looking to the outside. Nobody's been able to do that. Here we are, but he got right back down on the inside as quick as he could. What's happening is some of these cars are faster than the guys in front of them, but they're protecting that inside lane, even if that's going exceptionally slow. That's what's causing a lot of this bumping. That's back in 19th position where Kenny Wallace is. And Ernie Irvin's had enough. He's going to pull his Kodak car behind the wall. He was involved in one of those skirmishes with Ed Perry, and it looks as if Urban's car may be overheating as they go under the hood. Kenny Wallace, I said 19th. He was 19th in line. He's in 15th position in this race. That's where you get in a problem. Here's a car. He's probably a lot quicker than some of those other cars, but he just can't get around them because you see a lot of fast cars move the outside on some racetracks. You just can't do it here today. There's a look at Ernie Urban's car. Trouble under the hood for the Kodak machine. Right there at turn four. Must be something under the motor. In the motor, they just looked at it and they're going to let it set a while. I don't, Ernie might have had all this slide he wants for the day. That's possible. Ward Burton slides way up the racetrack. It, you see somebody go and it, it's almost like they've got a tire going down. But it's not the tire, it's the track that's going down. Yes, yeah, one of the few races you'll ever see we're going to wear the track out instead of the tires today. Ricky Craven's back in the race. Jimmy Spencer lapping past him there. And Jeff Gordon's in trouble. A lot of smoke from the baby Ruth car. Rear end, Neil? Yes, yeah, looks like it's coming out of the rear of the car. Still under power. Looks like he's putting a lot of grease down. It's going to be hard to tell if it's any slicker or not. But looks like he might be putting a little bit of oil down on the edge of the track off the track down in turn two down to the inside and will not be able to limp that car around back to pit road caution is out gordon's car is parked in turn two right at the bottom of the racetrack so they'll have to put the caution out there's gordon's car in a precarious spot should anybody spin about a turn number two they're going to have to work on turn three and four again mike it's uh I'm not so sure we ran about as many laps this time as we did before, and there's not quite as much debris as it was the first time. I'm not going to say it's going to get much better, but it didn't tear up quite as bad this time. So the red flag out again this time at lap 66. The first one was at lap 35. So you're right, Neil, just 30, 35 laps in between. Uh, we've been able to get some green flag racing in. Um, let's have a look at what happened to Jeff Gordon's car. We speculated rear end, and uh, that was not quite correct. Mike here is he's coming up off the second turn down the back straightaway. He's going down the back straightaway. He's fixing to enter the corner and watch the back end of the car kick out as he goes down in the corner. He's driving down on the inside right now. And then the tire blows. See the car jump right there. He ran over some of that debris or something. It blew a rear tire. The car lifted off the ground and that's the right rear tire smoking real bad. And he just had to really slow down and almost got hit. But it's the, the right tier tire is all the way down on the rear. Did a nice job of controlling that car. Yep. He's done for the day with that car, but Mike, that, those rocks, these are these tires are two-ply tires, and can they come brand spanking new slicks with just five thirty seconds of rubber on them, which is about a third what a street tire has on them. It, it, they just cannot run with those rocks or pebbles because it'll go straight through it in just one. He turned down the corner, just lost the tire immediately. Now here's the sweeper out working turns three and four again. I have the sweeper in the 18th position, one lap down. I think he lost a lap there in the pits, but otherwise. Uh, he's got a good shot at this thing today. Yeah, but he's just making half laps. You're just counting him at the start finish line. Well, he goes past the score stand, so uh, <laughs> they count. Oh, uh, he could be the biggest payday for a John Deere tractor I've seen. <laughs> What's that? Alice Kalman? Whatever that is. Yeah. Let's get the uh, name right here. Let's get some airtime today. Especially, you like that spoiler on the roof? If I tell you what, though, uh, it, I started to say he wasn't going to go as far as he did before, but he's going to come back. He's going to sweep it in the opposite direction this time. He's changing the rotation. Maybe that's for good luck. Well, the folks out here at uh, Hickory enjoying Chamber of Commerce weather. Temperature in the low 80s. Just a few scattered clouds in the sky. Going to be some sunburns tomorrow. Today's exclusive coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 on TNN is brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. They're stopped here at Hickory for the second time today. Steve Grissom in the lead. And you see... Uh, there for a second when you saw Robert Presley's car a bit of water streaming down the track from it his car is reported as overheating as is Scott Kilby's car overheating is what took uh, Ernie Irvin out of the race 
There's uh, there's a look at Presley's car, and you see just a little bit of water dribbling down there. And Neil, that's not just due to because it being so warm today. Mike, when this track's tearing up like this, we're seeing the big rocks and pebbles on the track. We're not seeing the grind and dust and the sand and stuff. And it just crams back in these radiators. And these guys, are the whole front area of these cars are plugged up now. We usually plug a car up to qualify, but these guys are racing with them full of trash. And the next step is going to be burning some motors down. Well, the fellow who brought out the caution flag that led to this red flag is back behind the wall with Glenn Jerry. Glenn? Well, we're standing by with Jeff Gordon. Jeff, one of those guys slipping and sliding out there. What happened to the car? Well, they said it broke the front of the crankshaft off. Why and, you know, when it did it, all I know is I was going into three. Uh, motor quit and something clunked underneath the car, ran over the top of whatever, the pulley that, that fell off. Uh, it's unfortunate because the Baby Ruth Thunderbird was running good. As bad as the track conditions were, today is one of those survival days. You try to get in line and, and just ride it out and get some points. And fortunately, we were running in seventh position. So, uh, you know, things were going well for us as bad as the track conditions were, but it's just too unfortunate. Well, there's something in Jeff's car. If we can get the camera on it, I want to show it. There's a tape to the roll bar. There's a sign that says Harry Gant. What's that all about? Well, Harry Gant's been winning a lot of races, and, and one of the reasons is because he's very patient and he really knows how to uh, to um, keep the, his equipment under him, the tires, without burning them off and, and brakes and stuff like that. So uh, the guys all thought that'd be pretty good if they put Harry Gant on there, and, and just as a little reminder to me that, to be patient. He's got a lot of time to be patient now, Mike. Well, he was pretty patient coming to the front, Glenn. He started 21st, and as you reported, he was running 7th when the car let go. You know, basketball, everybody wants to be like Michael Jordan. Does I want to be like Mike commercials? I think here everybody wants to be like, they're just wild about Harry. I tell you what, Mike, that's a pretty impressive name on top of his race car anyway. Jeff Gordon, he's quite a racer. And you talk about somebody with a future ahead of him at his age and the, the things he's accomplished now. He's going to be dealing with this race. We're trying to get a lap back from Steve Grissom. At lap 70, we go back to green. Clean restart. And down in one, that inside groove just takes right off. Now Presley gets worked up to the high groove. Earnhardt slips underneath him. Nice move. Yeah, Earnhardt's trying to get that lap back, and he saw he couldn't do it on the outside, so he's going to try the inside right now. Give Robert Presley a call. He just saved that car. It about got away from him. And he rode it out. He drops back out of the top four spots, though. Back to fifth or sixth position. Grissom, the leader. Waltrip in second. Earnhardt up to third. Jimmy Spencer fourth. Jack Sprague. And Robert Presley. I believe Sprague may be a lap down. So that'll move, put Presley back in fourth. Tracy Leslie is on to go. Right side tires on the Detroit gasket car. There's Earnhardt running on the inside of Waldrop. He's needing a Waldrop, and the leader would like to just pace themselves. And here's a guy, Earnhardt's a lap down. He's having to run his car hard to get that lap back, and he's moving him out of the way. Like enough of this, let's go racing. <laughs> so he's up there in the hunt, but you're right. He's not on the leaderboard. He's a lap back. It is Grissom, the leader, Waldrop second, Jimmy Spencer third, and Robert Presley fourth. And they each have a lap car separating them one from the other. I don't know that I've ever seen a race, Mike, where everybody protects the inside line as much as they do here. Even at Martinsville. That's right. Not so much. The straightaway's here so short, Neil. If you try to run somebody up off of turn number two, you don't hardly have room to get alongside them to get down into three underneath them, do you? No, and that's what causes the bumping in the corner. A guy coming up on him and say, hey, I got a foot on him. I've got him. The guy leading doesn't even know it. <laughs> Here's Earnhardt putting the, putting the heat on the Grissom. Grissom would like... Right now, he's in a leading the race, and he'd like to be pacing himself with a big lead, but Earnhardt's trying to get that lap back, and he's going to have to make up his mind. Does he let Earnhardt go, or does he battle him off to keep him a lap down? With one driver you don't want to give back a lap to, it's Earnhardt. He might not have that option. He might try to take it back. Everybody working the bottom of the racetrack now. Single file, lap 78 on the board. Earnhardt's getting the left side wheels off in the dirt, trying to get up under Grissom to get that lap back. And there he is up under. That puts him back in the lead lap, but he's on almost a lap down, but he did get the lap back. Earnhardt's in 20th position. Back at third, a battle. Just behind that group of leaders, Jimmy Spencer tried to take a spot from Darrell Waltrip. Didn't have any luck. 
Mike, we'll see cars pull up beside each other in the straightaway. When they get to the corner, they're turning left, no matter who's there on that inside area. Here's Jeff Burton come up right with Pete Grissom. He wants his lap back as well. And then there's Waltrip, and here comes Spencer right on the bottom, underneath the yellow line, going for second spot. Mike, they already see the outside's unusual. They're trying to dirt Harold part of the racetrack on the inside. He's getting a pretty good bike there. I don't know if Darrell let him go, but if he did, it might not have been a bad idea. Jimmy Spencer running hard. That's Paramount Motors Buick. Jim Bound has spun at turn one. That'll bring out the caution lap 82. And trouble up in turn three. Jack Sprague was trying to get a lap back from Steve Grissom as they came around to the line, and two cars just wouldn't fit into that low groove at the same time. No, David Green got his lap back, and 59 cars also tried to get in there. But Sprague, I mean, he tried to get in, and they got tangled up and turned them around. Grissom continues without incident and falls in line behind the pace car now. We say without incident, Mike, I'm not sure. He really took a lick on that right front. You know, as strong as he was running, we'll have to see if that hurts him later on. But he took a pretty good shot on the right front as he turned down on it. Let's look at that car as it comes around. Steve Grissom, the channel lock car, the race leader. There's Jimmy Spencer right with him. And doesn't look to be much damage. Not apparent on the right front of that car. Just rubbed the white walls off, though. Yeah, <laughs> let's check with Glenn Jarrett. Well, guys, normally when there's a, a car crashing or something like that, you don't see crews reacting too much. But that time, when Jim Bounds spun down there, Dale Earnhardt's crew went wild because if you remember, he had just gotten that lap back. He's at the tail end of the lead lap now. He's got the leader in the, in the same straightaway with him. He's going to be trouble before this day's over. That was a great break for Earnhardt and for Jeff Burton, both of whom got their laps back. It was a tough break for Jack Sprague, who did not. Pace car is in. Lap 85, or 84 rather, we're back to green, and they're three wide out of turn number four. Just behind the leader. Well, this could be a stack of up as Tommy Houston backs through the field. Grissom leading. Here comes Spencer in hot pursuit. Then Waltrip. We got a car going completely up in the air <laughs> over turn four where they got hung up right behind the lead pack right here. And there's Sprague coming up ahead of Walter. He's working hard to get his lap back, but these two guys in front are going to be tough. Grissom and the six-tire machine of Jimmy Spencer, the 77 car. Well, it took three laps, but now the field single file once again, and all these fans can stop holding their breath for Mike, a minute. One lap ago, I saw the entire bottom of Mike Wallace's car. He went up over the top of another one. And they're so used to it, they just keep racing now. <laughs> Jay Fogelman out of Durham has made a pit stop in the fun stuff Pontiac. He goes back into the race. Spencer going to try it. And there's Mike Wallace's car with uh, Ward Burton applying a little customizing. That was the bumper cover you saw flying off. And in turn two, Kenny Wallace is stacked up. Yellow. Turn four, Tommy Houston spins. Steve, we don't have enough cameras to cover this racetrack. It's only three-eighths of a mile, and there's no way we can cover everything that's going on with one camera at a time. They're spinning at both ends at I the same believe. time. Remember when the rear bumper cover blew off of Mike Wallace's car? Guess where it went. Yeah. Uh, he and Ward Burton were battling along, and Ward kind of helped that cover along and off. Well, it's kind of cosmetic. Didn't much need it anyway. Off it went. And guess who came along well, the lap later and scooped it up? It, it's not off yet, but he's going to lose it coming up the back straightaway here. Yep. He went ahead and clipped it the rest of the way. Did him a favor. He chopped there the rest of the way off. And thunk right underneath the front of Todd Bodine's car. So they waved the green. Todd came to a stop under the back stretch, and now he's stopped in the pits where Glenn Jarrett's there. Well, guys, the final exclamation point to that thing is that bumper wedged up against the oil pump locked the belt up so that if the oil pump didn't pump any oil, it locked the engine up the bottom and put it out of the way. Well, I suppose inquiring minds want to know the record for caution flag in the Bush Grand National Series last year's race at South Boston, 19. We've had nine already today, and we're coming up on one-third this week. Could be in jeopardy today. Could be a new record. The wrong time. Steve Grissom getting pressure from Jack Sprague, who wants his lap back. In the Staff America old, Jimmy Spencer dirt tracking it out of four, in second place, watching Grissom scoot away. Jack Sprague might really try something. He tried it a while ago. He's on the inside of him. They got together coming to the caution a while ago. This time he got under him, and he temporarily has that lap back. If he can hold it, we'll have to see. 
you know, Grissom may have, may, may have made a smart move there. Sprague gets underneath him while Grissom still got enough room to get back in line before Spencer gets up underneath him. Yeah, that's kind of go from offense to defense in a hurry. Just quit worrying about that guy and try to get you protected. Turn one. Caution 10. That's Richard Lassiter. And is that Kenny Wallace? It is. And company. Kenny gets a lap down as a result. Caution 10. Lap 101. We're one third distance. At turn one, Lassiter, who was also involved in the first caution of the day, tangles with Kenny Wallace. Bragg, just 48, just got his lap back. He had just cleared Grissom, so that, that battle was well worth it. Here comes uh, Kenny Wallace coming at the left front tire, blown out, and sparks flying all off the bottom of the race, or the race car. Chair of the exhaust system off us, not careful with that tire down like that. And the pit car still closed, as they are in the first lap of any caution period, so Kenny will have to come around again. Last year's series runner-up. That could be. That real big spark you see of it almost looks like a flame. It's probably the sway bar. The front sway bar on the car has little arms under it that stick under the A-frame, and it's probably riding on the uh, sway bar right now. Well, we'll catch up on pit stops under this caution in a moment as they hook up Richard Lassiter's innkeeper, Pontiac, to the wrecker. We'll be back to Hickory. Network, the number one source for country music, entertainment, and information. Today's coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 is being brought to you by New Rams UV99. Protect your car from the sun's damaging ultraviolet rays, the sunblock for your car. Well, this is Jeff Hensley. He's the crew chief on the uh, slippery machine number 63 driven by Chuck Bound today. Why is nobody pitting? Well, <laughs> right now, new tires is not doing anybody any good because he can't pass anybody. I mean, the only way he can pass them is knock them out of the way or jump over them and I wouldn't pit right now for $5,000 because you just can't pass nobody, you know. But uh, we can just keep all the fenders straight on a Nestle Bay Nestle Pontiac. We'll be, we'll be in good shape. And I want to say hello to my wife, Debbie, and my daughter, Emily. They're in New Hampshire for Easter. Hello. We're going to try to finish this thing. Okay, guys, they don't want to give up track position. That's why nobody's coming into pits unless they absolutely have to. Well, finishing this thing is going to be an accomplishment the way we're going today. Usually we count how many laps we're into this race. Let's do, uh, we're, we're 10 caution flags into this race. Lap 107. Let's have another look from Kenny Wallace's perspective. Here he is going down in the corner. They get the car wiggling around from him. He probably has to lift a little right here. Coming up off the corner. Looks like the car's coming up off there pretty good. Starting down in the corner. Looks like he might either got a tap in the rear. He got down into the five car, but hmm, there comes the, looks like the 20 car on the inside. After that, it's kind of history, folks. One to go. We'll go back to racing. Earnhardt at the back of the pack there after that stop. He is on the lead lap. We just heard some people say that they didn't want to give up track position. Earnhardt is the type of guy that he can make some track position, so he's willing <laughs> to go back to the rear, put some tires on that thing, and see if he can come back to the front. Now, Kenny Wallace comes up the outside as a lap car. Or no, I believe he's going to stay right at the back of the pack there. Kenny must not feel that comfortable with that car because on both these restarts he kind of laid back and waited for him to get out of the way. As happens again. And we're back to green. Jimmy Spencer takes off with the lead. He is the third driver to lead today. And Kenny Wallace goes up in smoke in turn two. Going to coast it down the back straightaway and head for pit lane. Shut it off. The question is, is there any oil on the inside in one and he blew up right in the only place there's a groove but the leader just went through that particular area and didn't have a problem so it must not have messed the track up any worse i'm mistaken he is still running but the smoke looks like coming out that left side header pipe must have burned a piston or something they'll do it sometimes on the caution when, when they get hot like that we stay green chuck bound takes a spot from daryl waltrip as you watch uh, jimmy spencer steve grissom there's Bowden and Walter battling behind Jimmy Hensley. Ed Faree has made a stop. And Bowden beginning to scoot away from Daryl now. Trouble in two, Jim Bowden. The 98 car. Caution. Lap 120. Caution 12. And counting. <laughs> we're, there's no doubt we're going for the record. Piece of spoiler off somebody's car. Where could that possibly have come from off of these cars? Well, it's up in turn two. And 
Earnhardt talks in rowing. He, the last time Andy got left side tires, he was about a third or fourth from the rear on this thing, so he's going to put right sides on it. And uh, he's got to come from the rear. He might as well have some new tires on it. I think Schrader's paying a tire bill. He told me today he was going to burn up <laughs> as much tires and bend up as many fenders as he could while it was blown to Schrader. He's doing a job of it, isn't he? <laughs> I doubt seriously he loaned the car to Earnhardt and expected it back without any scratches. One to go. We'll be racing. Darrell Waltrip's in for a stop. He'll get right side on the Western Auto Car. And they're trying to push start Kenny Waller. Not much success here. Yeah, there's been smoke that's coming out. It's not wanting the crank. I think it's partially blown up uh, or either fill the pipes up with oil because every time it turns over, even when they're pushing it, puffs out the tailpipes. Tough day for the Martinsville race winner and the point leader. On the other restart, Spencer couldn't get going. Let's see if he's got a transmission trouble. Yes, he can't get going on this restart either. He must have a problem with the transmission because on both of the last restarts, he lost positioning on the starts. Steve Grissom could have gone to the outside, but didn't. Here comes Hensley under Grissom at turn three, and Jimmy eases out of the throttle there. Yeah, uh, once you get that nose in there, very few people are lifting out of the throttle today. They're just taking it away from him, but he did lift as they went in the corner. Now, picking through traffic, Kenny Wallace going again. That's Kenny at the bottom of your screen, lipping around. Jack Sprague is the front car in line. He's gotten his lap back. Boy, Kenny Wallace was coming in real slow, and they all stacked up behind him. No problem, though. Kenny's back in the pits. Here's Hensley again, back straight away made the pass this time. He completely cleared him. Jimmy Hensley ahead of Steve Grissom. That's the first blue car on your screen. And now Chuck Bowne is underneath Steve Grissom. Looks like the handle's just completely going away on Steve's car. Hensley for the lead. Back straight away. Jimmy Hensley who moves on to drive Cale Yarborough's car on the Winston Cup circuit. Giving one of Don Beverly's cars a great ride here today. Hard to believe that team has soldiered on for so long, unsponsored, and yet has performed so well. Yeah, just week in, and they're not a flash in the pan team. No. Every week they're in contention to win races, and it's amazing they haven't got a sponsor that far yet. Well, they've had some one-race sponsorship deals, but there's nothing to come together for the full season. Like that car is equipped with the Hoosier tires, and Bob Newton is notorious for dirt track tires. Maybe they got something on Hensley's car that's doing it now. Uh, both he and Butch Miller running well here today, both on Hoosiers. Jack Sprague just in front of Hensley, trying to stay on the lead lap. Spencer is second. Bobby Dodder tried to move there. It didn't work on Grissom. And Tommy Houston backing up a bit. And there's your leader, Jimmy Hensley, in the Oldsmobile. Oh, Grissom's really fighting it out. He's going to have to. He can't get to the inside, never mind to get to pit road. Mike, in a situation like this, you usually say, they'll tell you, just ride it out and see if you get a caution. And usually you'll just fight it, fight it, fight it. And the minute you get lapped, you'll see the guy come in. But he's sitting there hoping to get a caution and see if they can repair the car or do some work on it. If not, if he gets lapped, they'll do something different. Joe Nemechek trying to work underneath Grissom here. Tom Peck in the 19 car. And Nemechek just can't quite get it in there. Here's Walker right there. Remember, Darrell changed tires and is coming up from the back. Grissom's car, even though he's holding these guys off right here, he's fall, falling way back from the leader. There he is on the inside. Nemechek down on the inside of him. And there, Nemechek cranked the car down under him, tried to get under him. He saw the car break completely loose. He couldn't quite pull it off. And Darrell is coming in a hurry with fresh right side tires. Yep. He pitted on that last caution, and he's got the car under control. And that's saying something. Wallace right behind him. This time, Nemechek has the bottom. And will make the pass. Look at Darrell just dive right under yep. there. And you saw the red dirt fly. That was the apron <laughs> off the racetrack. Usually when you get off the pavement, you're in trouble. Today, off the pavement doesn't hurt a whole lot. Dare we say it, this is the longest run of green flag racing we've had today. Boy, Grissom, his car is not running 40 miles an hour off the corner. He's, he's in a world of hurt. 146 laps, four laps from halfway. Of continuing to fade, trying to hang on. Trouble in one, and it was Steve Foley coming a foul of Dale Earnhardt. 
I don't know if Foley spun just before Dale got there or just what triggered that. He is the race leader. Chuck Bowne is second. 75 car, that's Butch Miller, is third. And remember the guy who had the first problem of the race and came in and had to get some tire, Bobby Labonte? Bobby's a fourth place car. On the lead lap. He's surviving. <laughs> yeah, he's come back well. Robert Presley is fifth. Jeff Burton is sixth. Joe Nemechek, Dale Earnhardt, Jack Sprague, Darrell Waltrip, Bobby Donner are all on the lead lap. And so is Jimmy Spencer and Mike Wallace. Roger Green. Hensley's car really looked good at the start of the race. Long after. And once he got in the lead, he stretched it out a little bit. Now he's leading the race, but he's got somebody putting a lot of heat on him right now. Chuck Bound is all over him. Let's add uh, Ward Burton to those cars on the lead lap. We heard, Halfway. Mike, we heard Chuck Bound's guy say that he was just going to take it easy and stay out of trouble and keep that track position. And sure enough, there is. He's right in contention now. He's fighting for the lead. Hensley and Bound, they battle for championships. Look at these two. 48 Jack Sprague and 20 Mike Wallace. They have traded everything but phone numbers here in the last 30 laps. There's not a straight piece left on either of those two cars. And right behind them, Jimmy Spencer. Let's stay with this battle for a bit because it's going to be a dandy. Jim Bound eases into the wall coming out of turn two and gets going again. But the caution is coming out, Mike. He's yep. sitting in a bad place on the track and went in through the caution. Not before Mike Wallace and Jack Sprague got another piece of each other. You said they didn't know their phone numbers. I'm sure they'll be asking this week. <laughs> but Jim Bound, looks like Jim just got in the marbles up out of turn number two. Pretty much saved the car, but it looks like he was going to park up there, so we got another caution. 15 caution flags and two reds. Man. Let's have another look at what happened to bring out the latest one. Here's what we see the car already loose on the outside. It whipped back to the right. The only thing he can do there is just get out of the throttle and stand on the brakes. And he, he was probably running 60 miles an hour. He first saw him, and he just parked the car, and you just have to stop and start over again to get the thing straightened back out. Mike, on all these restarts, there's always that option of you being able to go the outside lane to get your lap back. Nobody's trying that option. There's, there's Tommy Houston. He says, I'll try one more time. He's out there on the outside trying to get a lap back. No one's been able to do it yet. Everybody else single file. And he's done it. Tommy Houston runs to the front and gets a lap back from leader Jimmy Hensley. Maybe a little professional courtesy there. Yeah, he gave him a little bit of room. You know, Spencer was, a couple of times Spencer got beat, but he didn't get up to speed. This time it looked like Tom Houston just drove by him. Jay Fogelman bounced off the wall at turn four, but where's Bill Green? And here comes Hensley right back at Tommy Houston. And the hometown hero is going to come around. Around on the front bumper of Jimmy Hensley's car. A tough, tough day for the Houston. I tell you what, that was a set of, you know, they both wanted that inside lane, and he saw that nose in there, and all he could do was turn left and try to hold him off to get that lap back, and neither one of them wanted to give the inside lane up. My list of caution is going to page two. That's 16 caution flags for lap 162. And here comes Hensley, hard on the throttle out of turn number four, and the Bound brothers are side by side. Chuck runs off into the corner, and Jim gets hung to the outside. The leaders whip by him on the bottom side. Presley, now Labonte. And Bound trying to tuck in there and gets a little nip and tuck from Labonte. Here's Butch Miller up off the corner. He's underneath Chuck Bound. He's got plenty of running room, and he's going to take Robert Presley with him. Boy, once a guy gets under there, the, whoever's with him is going along also. That's starting to remind me of Martinsville. Yeah, Martinsville, a lot of braking involved, and I'm telling you, we're getting into that here. You know, sail it nine miles off the corner, slam on the brakes and stop, stay on that inside. Trouble in two at three. How many times is that for it? He's had a rough time of it today. One, two, three, four, four times. I tell you what, though, Mike, you know, not saying in a bad way, but when your car is off the pace a little bit and you have a car that's not handling well and then you get under these conditions, well, then it's virtually impossible to hold on to it. If it was the track was in good shape, he'd still be having trouble. But, boy, it really multiplies on a day like right. this. I agree. He and Chuck, uh, he and Jim Bound have each been involved in four caution flags today.
Caution 17, too shy of the record at lap 169 now. 131 laps to go. This field update is brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. there are no unimportant parts. Jeff Burton, we did get back to green, and Jeff Burton got tied up with another car and brought out this caution flag at lap 173, the 18th caution of the day. NASCAR officials removing some uh, debris. Well, it used to be race car parts, now it's just debris from the track in the front straightaway. We won't have to be doing this much longer because the rest of the pieces that are hooked on these cars are welded on. <laughs> just, that's just the small pieces that are flying <laughs> off now. Let's have another look as they come out of turn number four. Burton was on the lead lap running well. There he is, top of the screen. I think Jack, he and Jack Sprague got together and then he ended up on the front of Dale Earnhardt's car. Yeah, they got slowed down coming out of the corner and he nailed them right up off the corner. Jeff did a nice job of avoiding the wall. Now, as that was going on, at the front of the pack, Tommy Houston had gotten around Jimmy Hensley on the restart, and Houston has gotten back a lap. So he'll be at the tail end of the field, and in fact is now making a pit stop. Trouble on the Tom Peck car as he waves a couple of drivers by. Let's see if we do get green this time. We will. You can hear that hung up before they ever get to the start finish line. They ran together coming up off the corner. The three abreast going down to the first turn behind the leaders here. tries to sort itself out here. Butch Miller gets kicked to the outside, and he's going to go back at the top of your screen. Yep. Way back. Miller was a contender for the lead and got hung on the outside. Can't get back in. And Hensley's up to the fence in turn one and saves it. Boy, somebody took a whale of a shot at the left side of his car. Mike, that was the first and second place cars were running one, two. Now they're back in the rear of the pack. Left rear tire reported on Jimmy Hensley's car. He and Butch Miller, amazingly, both of the Hoosier shot cars going from first to third, first and third, to deep in the pack. There's Miller in trouble at the back of the field. Food country car. That'll put Robert Presley up front, the Darlington winner. Here's another look. Here they are, Mike, coming off the fourth turn. They, it gets inside of him a little bit. It crawls all the way up the left rear of, the, of Hensley's car. That's Presley. Hensley's out there. Look at the loose stuff we're talking about. Look at his flying just like driving through the dirt. Did a heck of a job to keep the car straight through that and get back in line. What a great save. And Robert Presley nearly had to file a flight plan down the front straightaway. He got the takeoff angle and nearly speed. Here's Earnhardt and Bound going at it for second place. Now, as you go down to turn one there, you look right at the scoreboard. No question in these fellas' mind. They're running for second spot here. And here comes Bobby Labonte right up with them. Robert Presley way out in front now after that fracas with Jimmy Hensley. Boy, these cars, when they come off the corner, you normally come off and you drift out to the wall. These cars are coming off the corner, heading to the infield, <laughs> just to keep anyone from getting under. Watch the 63 car, and it's the thing, too. Comes off the corner, instead of staying out the wall, he really moves to the inside of the racetrack and protects the inside lane a little bit. And that's the best. Oh, trouble in one. And give that one to Jimmy Spencer. Yeah, Jimmy got into the back of Labonte as they got down in the corner there. Or up under him a little bit. Jimmy came way down below the yellow line. And it wasn't even a question of trying to outdive him in the corner. He just slammed, Jim, uh, just slammed Bobby Labonte up out of the groove. Labonte is coming in. And here comes Bobby Labonte. I don't see an NASCAR official there. Glenn's there. Glenn? Uh, Bobby Labonte's in for right side tires, and boy, are they mad down here. Bobby Labonte's so mad, he said he couldn't even talk to me if he wanted to. Even Bobby Labonte's wife, who's normally the most mild man person in the world, is upset. Uh, Spencer ran all over them. They're just upset with the way some of the drivers are carrying on out there. They understand the conditions on the racetrack, but there's not a lot of happy campers down here right now. Jimmy Hensley had a tire cut when he went up in the marbles there. He cut a right side tire. They did come in and change that, so he should be back up to speed off road. 
And here's the body back in. Now he had to do this in two pit stops so as not to lose a lap by changing four tires. And remember the tire rule in effect at the start of this race has been lifted by NASCAR. They can change tires under caution without penalty. So Nemechek has made a stop. We see him going by. And now left side for Bobby Labonte will get a green in one lap. Robert Presley is the leader. Chuck Bowne is in second. Dale Earnhardt is third. And Jimmy Spencer has displaced Labonte as the fourth place car. Spencer was leading the race earlier and dropped back some. And that's not saying that anything unusual. A lot of them have dropped back. Let's have another look. He makes the call. 70, oh, he's always below the line there on the flat part. Labonte turned in and they got together. Not too much question about that one. Uh, the green flag is back out again. And Jim Bowne gets a lap back from Robert Presley. Or does he? <laughs> Hold on, Jim. He had it back for just a minute, but now the problem is he's got between Chuck Bowne and the leader. Chuck's going to need to get on around. Yeah, this is more than just sibling rivalry here. Because Jim is, is now in a position to hold Chuck up from a chance to win this thing. You look at the condition of these cars, you believe we still have 107 laps to go? Boy, they pretty well used them up. Boy, now Presley is pulling away with uh, Jim Bowen in between them. That's let Presley get a real big lead. Jim's not going to get to stay there long. They black flagged him for jumping the restart, and he will pit. And boy, when he pulled the inside lane, nobody wants to pass him on the outside. No, Earnhardt wouldn't go around him. Can you blame him? No, you get out there and you're gone. When they call him to turn down pit road, it virtually stopped the lead pack from even racing. He had to just park behind him. Stop and go for Jim Bowne. Well, that split the field up pretty well. Here comes Presley, the leader. A long gap back to Chuck Bowne. The Nescafe car in second. And that Western Steer machine for Earnhardt. Remember, Earnhardt in the 15 car today for Kenny Schrader. Turn one. Steve Boley, the Iowa driver, and he had help. So the 20th caution of the day is up for Steve Boley up in turn number one, driving the Jack Ingram car. Actually licensed by NASCAR. The 92 Max Collection features 300 cards on all the future stars and superstars of Winston Cup and Bush Grand National Racing. And to commemorate our fifth anniversary, we've also put together a one-of-a-kind set of gold stamp cards that comes complete with randomly inserted cards from previous Max editions. Available at card shops and retailers everywhere. The Max Race Card Fifth Anniversary Collection is going fast. He wonders if I even noticed that visual perfection produces unbelievably deep, rich, glowing color. An intense, dazzling, brilliant shine. <laughs> I do. Visual Perfection by Eagle One, the ultimate auto polish. Eagle One's video guide to Burton trying to get a lap back. Driving the TIC financial car, number eight. Here comes Spencer as he bangs Chuck Bown and he gets underneath. And Griffin trying to make the same move. And he gets in there. And it's a matter of just muscling your way under. Chuck Bowne said he'd get out of the groove and had to just stop and restart the car. He went all the way, way back in the line when he got hung on it outside. Folks, it is the bump and stumble 500. You bump somebody, they stumble, you move up. Waltrip and Earnhardt coming into turn one. And Darrell makes the pass. There's Hensley leading down the back straightaway. He's, the last couple of times this thing's restart, he's been able to get a good bite up off the corner. Most cars can't do that. Presley, that is. Robert Presley up at the front of the pack. Jimmy Spencer now second. There's Mike Wallace and Chuck Bound battling, and they've been going at it. Tommy Houston right with them. Seems like after that last caution, Ooh. Chuck Bowne lost something. You know, he got out in that loose stuff. He might have cut a tire down because we've seen this several times that a guy will start losing a little ground, then he goes in, he's got a flat tire. He moves all the way out in the loose stuff, and he probably picked up his deal with the tires. He's losing the tires. Now. So Chuck Bowne, who had hoped to run this entire race without a pit stop, may need to make one here. Mike, he's going to probably do just like we saw earlier, try to run until they do lap him, and then if they catch him, he'll come in. He'll try to catch a caution. And they've been easy to catch today because we've had plenty of them. There's 
Robert Presley leading this race. Jeff Burton a lap down. Jimmy Spencer, the third car in line at 77. He is the second place car. Spencer is really, really coming now. Then Steve Grissom. Trouble in three. Tracy Leslie climbs up and over the Mike Wallace car. Something had started to go on Wallace's car, and he had a real slow entry into the corner. And it was as if the other car could not slow down or stop. Chuck Bound did catch that caution that we were talking about. He needed. He'll have the opportunity to pit on the caution now. But these two cars were, one of them was completely airborne, went up over the 20 car getting in the corner. We're going back to green. <laughs> Robert Presley, Jimmy Spencer, Darrell Waltrip. Neither Chuck Bound nor Steve Grissom could get a lap back as Bound goes up and into the wall. And I don't think they're going to throw the caution. Nope. He's going to stay green. Here comes here's Spencer getting up under him as we were watching the car down the back straightaway. Spencer's making a run at the lead. And Grissom goes up high. And Presley is loose and dragging his bumper. Chuck Bound, or rather Jim Bound, pits his car. And the right front is torn off, and he'll be done for the day. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Right up and underneath Robert Presley. Something is going to happen here. Mike, that's no coincidence that the back bumper's torn up in the right front of the other one. They got together down in the corner a while ago as that other caution was happening. Here's Spencer down on the inside. And they want a piece of Spencer's car flying off. And the leader of this race has just been black flag. If I was him, I'd run about two more. It's a good chance he'll lose that piece off the car. Spencer's working on it. Looks like just a piece of trim. That's a rubber bumper cover on all these cars, so it's, it would just be a trim piece there. But they have black flag Robert Preston. You might see something. If Spencer gets up there and knocks it off, he won't have to black, he won't have to come in. No, he won't get close to him now. So Spencer might lay back now seeing that caution. If he were to knock it the rest of the way off there, it's gonna if he wouldn't have to come in. So Spencer's gonna give him a little bit of room right now. Presley's number is on the black flag board. I think they give you three laps. I'm not certain, but I think they give you three laps, and then they pick up your scorecard. And here comes Spencer. Underneath Presley, not that time. Well, we have seen it all today. Because and here's Waltrip. Darrell trying on the outside and had second thoughts about that. And that stacks the field up behind them. And now Presley pits. What a bitter disappointment that must be. And not only that, the piece is off the car. It's gone. He pitted and a piece fell off going down the back straightaway. Ricky Pearson reaching under trying to find it to pull it off. It's gone. Looks like Spencer's able to pull out a little bit on the restart. Daryl actually had the inside line. I thought he had Spencer going. Here's Daryl getting a shove up off the corner. Boy, he got the thing completely sideways. Up. Or Steve Grissom got him completely yes, sideways. Yes, <laughs> Grissom got it to him up <laughs> off the corner. Gave him a little bit of shove and took his position away from him. But it's just track position. Walter is still the second place car. Grissom will need that lap back, and he's going to go up and have to battle Spencer. And we've already seen Spencer doesn't give up a position very easily. Well, it's kind of unusual in the Bush Grand National Series that Spencer is he in trouble. No, Spencer made him go to the outside, and he actually got such a bite off the corner, he went right around him on the outside. I think you can see that Grissom was able to get under him. He knew if he got under him, then Walter would follow him. So he just gave him the outside line. At the right of your screen, they have black flagged the number eight car, Jeff Burton. That car is smoking pretty well from the rear end. And Tommy Houston sends Waltrip up out of the groove and out of second place. And back to about 10th. That's just Ooh. what it took, one slip, and there he goes. So now the running order. Now the running order has Jimmy Spencer, Tommy Houston in second. And that will move Bobby Labonte up to third. Ward Burton, Dale Earnhardt, Joe Nemechek, and then Walter Ben Burton's going to go around in two. He got up too high and spun. No contact. No it's caution. No caution. He's sitting on the racetrack. Well, the starter was busy working the passing play. 41 laps to go. Here goes Tommy Houston. He's got the inside line on him. Hickory's hometown hero, and Spencer gives him a talking to. Tommy gets the lead. But I think that right front is going to be rubbing here. Boy, right rear, excuse me, right rear. He didn't want to give it up. He, when he said he's got by him, he turned down. He thought he could get back up under him, and they got hung up coming off the corner. Earnhardt, stop and go. Don't know what they fixed in that length of time. They might have got a tire rub handled. 
Yeah, I saw a big ball, and they pulled out a little bit on that. And here's Earnhardt popping up right in front of Jimmy Spencer on the racetrack. And that will give Houston a good lead. And everybody here at Hickory is on their feet. Tommy Houston in the Rose's Scores car. Trying to pull off his first win in nearly 50 Bush Grand National races. Started this race dead last in a provisional spot. Now there's second place. Jimmy Spencer behind Earnhardt, who had made a pit stop to secure a tire rub. You know, it's going to be hard for Earnhardt just to pull over. He was right there battling with these guys directly behind him for position. And he's still thinking that he can get up there and get around Tommy Houston. And the caution comes out, he's back in the lead lap again. Right. So he's not going to give up much ground. And as we say that, he's battling right now to get that lap back. The problem here, if he gets that inside line, Spencer has opportunity to go with him. Oh, here comes Dale, and he gets just barely into Houston. Never mind that these two are in-laws. Boy, Spencer just, for the moment, biding his time. Spencer's cheering for Earnhardt right now, because if <laughs> Earnhardt can get by, right now, Tommy Houston's best bet is posting Dale outside and tell him to go around and lift early, get in the corner, let him go on. I don't know if he's going to do that or not. He can let one car by on the outside, but he can't do it on the inside. Trouble out of four. Jay Fogelman spins. Darrell Waltrip just misses him, and that'll bring out the caution. Here they come to the flag, and Earnhardt will stay a lap down. That shows you how far that in-law stuff goes. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't pull over and say, hey, here's your lap back. In-laws and outlaws. Well, actually, the best place for Earnhardt, from Houston's perspective, is right behind him. Yep. Keeping Jimmy Spencer back there. Well, you hate to wish for anything in the sport, but wouldn't it be nice if Tommy Houston could break that winless, long winless streak and win here at his home track. 33 laps to go. Jay Fogelman's car has brought out the 23rd caution flag of the day. We'll be back to Hickory right after the Tommy really gets a good jump on these restarts. He's pulled away from him, but Spencer's been able to close in after he gets going again. Houston pulls him up out in turn number two. Spencer and Bobby Labonte right there. Yeah, Labonte's getting in the picture now. These other two guys have been abusing things a lot, and Labonte's coming on up. There have been seven Bush Grand National races this year. They've been won by seven different drivers. Spencer's got the ability with that car of his to get the nose up under him, right off the corner. And right there going in, he lets just lets us sail in and leans all over the back of him. And then as they get right in here, this is where he's working on him. And I mean working. He's giving him a shove or two every lap. But he's been able to get the nose to the inside. There we go. See Tommy moves the inside, protecting that inside line. Of the drivers that have won races so far this season, the highest placed of those drivers is Ward Burton back in eighth spot. So we're almost, I say almost, guaranteed of an eighth different winner today. And Hensley and Burton get mixed together. Here's Labonte up underneath Spencer, but only for a moment. He had about two foot of the car under Spencer, but he, he backed out as I got out in the corner. Spencer, right in the middle of the corner. He's coming hard, but here's Labonte. Labonte's got it. Now Spencer, before, just turned left when they got in that situation, trying to hold him back. He's out there on the outside. If he gets in that loose stuff, and he did. And he spins it off the wall and saves it. Amazing piece of driving by Jimmy Spencer. He used the wall as a cushion to straighten out his car, but it's dressed, it's taken him all the way back to seventh place. Ken Houston hang on for five laps. Labonte looked to the inside, but it was a feint, and two cars are in the wall in two. Jimmy Spencer and Jack Sprague. Chuck Bound was completely beside, up beside Labonte, but the caution came out, or he would have had that position going in one. Four laps to go. And there's Spencer coming around all of them. Will this race get restarted? Three to go. Here's the pace car. We may not get back to green. Houston, Labonte, Bound, and Nemechek. There are three laps to go. There may be time for one lap under green. Let's have a look, Neil. Yeah, they came off the corner there. They got through. There's Spencer on the inside. 48 car got the rear hung out and he gets the right rear out in that loose stuff. He wants to get back to the inside, but he can't get the car turned down in there. Scott Houston jumping up and down, embracing the NASCAR official. There
they're going to get their checkered flag. <laughs> On the weekend, where Tommy Houston mourns the loss of his dad, he scores a personal mark here and breaks a nearly 50 race winless streak at his home race track where he started his career and has won track championships. He's the winningest Bush Grand National driver since the series started in 1982 at this racetrack, and he takes the checkered flag for his eighth Bush Grand National victory at Hickory. Sometimes you win, race, win races, he won the war today, and I'm telling you, it was a war from start. race off in trouble got a lap down battle got it back lost it again got it back again got back on the lead lap Scott Houston his son and crew chief right there high-fiving it over the hood Glenn Jarrett's there with our winner okay guys he's still being congratulated by the crew here Scott Houston all the guys did a great job a day of conflicting emotions for Tommy Houston. We told him about the, we told you about the death of his dad last night, but what an exciting day this was. Tommy, congratulations, man. Well, yeah, thank you, uh, Glenn. Uh, I was telling Scott on the cool down lap here, I said, uh, you know, my daddy didn't go to races a whole lot. He did back in the dirt days, and I think today he must have been watching from up above. I sure hope he was, and uh, this, by all means, is dedicated to my dad. Well, to, to break this drought in front of the hometown fans, man, it couldn't have been any better, could it? Well, yeah, that's true, Glenn. Uh, you know, anywhere, and we've been strong enough to run the rest of, I mean, the races this season we've got caught up in some little deals, but this Rosie Store Buick, he just kept running the same every day. All we did was put tires on it, and uh, so Scott and those guys did a heck of a job on the setup, and Don Miller did, did a heck of a job on the engine. Well, I think a race driver did a heck of a job, too, in uh, making up laps twice out there. Good job, man. It was, uh, it was, uh, you know, about as bad as I've ever seen. You had to get in there and root people and, and knock them out of the way and everything, and and I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, fault the people that knocked me out of the way early in the race, and I don't think that they did me later in the race. It's just a good, hard race, and especially under the conditions. Well, congratulations again to Tommy Houston. His pit crew has been named the Miller Genuine Draft Crew Chief or Crew of the Race Award. Back upstairs to Mike Joy. And a fitting honor there as well. Thank you, Glenn, for a lot of running around down there, especially during the red flag. Scott Houston and crew are the Miller Genuine Draft pit crew of the race. Exclusive coverage of the Mountain Dew 500 on TNN has been brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. And by Miller Genuine Draft, cold filtered for real draft taste. So get out of the old, get into the cold. <laughs>